Hello and welcome to A Healthy State, a series where I talk to doctors and other health professionals about important health topics. I'm Dr. Nellie Simmons, thank you for joining me. Today's episode is about men's health. Almost 50% of the Australian population identify as male. Heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes and mental health conditions are among the top diseases affecting men. Did you know that men are more likely to get sick from serious conditions? They visit the doctor less and they see their doctor later on in their illness compared to women. In this episode, we will discuss why it is so important for men to have a regular GP. We'll hear about what diseases we can screen for in men and we'll touch on the topic of mental health and why it is something we cannot ignore in men. GPs play a huge role in men's health. To chat to us about why it is so important for all men to have a regular GP and some of the important screening tests that should be done, Dr. Tia Mohei is here to join me. Dr. Tia is a general practitioner and senior lecturer with an interest in preventative health. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Nelu. Nice to be here. Now, it is pretty well described that men don't access healthcare as much as they should or as often as they should. Is this well described and why do you think this is the case? Yeah, it's true. Um, our statistics do show that men access primary healthcare way less than their female counterparts. There are many reasons. Um, there are the personal reasons, I guess, in our society. Men are providers, they're strong, they're macho, and therefore asking for help is is very out of line with what they would naturally do, um, especially if they're single men. Um, people who are, or men who are partnered with women might have a nudging from their female counterpart to present to a GP, um, but often no. And they also have a, usually, they tend to have a, a she'll be right attitude, so waiting for things to present really late is not an uncommon thing. Um, and then there's, I guess, systemic barriers. Most of our primary care primary health care practitioners are female um, and we work during normal work hours, so access might be a bit of a barrier as well. Yes, yeah, so a lot of important things to think about there, but you know, despite all of these barriers, should men be having a regular GP? It's important for men to have uh, a regular GP. Everyone should have one. And it's important that you're not starting um, a relationship each time with a new practitioner, but you have a long-term relationship with a GP. Yes. So how often should men in particular, should be checking in with the GP, do you think? When you are under the age of 30, it's important that you're seeing your GP at least once a year for your sexual health screening. Um, and then as you're getting towards your mid, middle age, in your 50s, we start talking about other screening that, might ne that usually can happen every two years, like your bowel cancer screening, your skin checks, your assessment for diabetes. As you get older, your frequency to seeing a GP should become a bit more... Um, Great, so that's a great segue into my next question, which is going into screening tests. So, you know, we know a lot about breast checks and mammograms and things like that, but what sort of screening tests are there available for men? Are you happy to go through some of them with us? Yeah, so from middle age, men are advised to have their bowel cancer screening. So that's the one that's rolled out by the Australian government. So for your 50th birthday, the Australian government gives you a 50th birthday present, which is your first bowel cancer screen. And it has to continue every two years until you're about 74 years old. Um, if you are fair skin, blue eyed, ideally you should be having a skin check once a year. And depending on your body habitus, your family history, you should be having a diabetic screen. All those are determined in frequency by your general practitioner, but yeah starting off with just your 50th birthday one, at least. And what about prostate cancer screening? Is there anything that can be done for that? Well, that one's a bit of a debatable screening test. So a screening test ideally is a test that you roll out to the population with an understanding that an abnormal result means that something is potentially really wrong. So with your bowel cancer screening, what it does is you check for uh, blood in the, in the motions. Um, and yes, blood in the motions could be bowel cancer, but it could also be hemorrhoids and other things. So you're doing a test with an understanding that yes, if it's positive, you will have further testing to figure out whether you have bowel cancer or not. With the prostate, it's not quite so definitive. So yes, sometimes when you're having um, symptoms, it's important that we screen for the prostate and make sure that it's not causing any issues with prostate cancer. But the test itself, it, 
if it's abnormal, it doesn't necessarily say something is really abnormal with the prostate. It is something to discuss further with your GP, but it's not mandatory and it's not rolled out like a bowel cancer screening. Okay, yeah. fantastic. And just for our viewers who may not be aware, why is it important to screen for these tests so regularly? Every two years from 50 to 74 seems like a lot. Yeah. Um, can you just outline why this might be so crucial? Well, a screening test, as I said, is a test you roll out of the population. So you turn 50, you get a birthday present. You actually typically don't have anything wrong, or so you think, until we do a test. So a lot of these illnesses are silent killers in that they present or you have symptoms only when now you have a big problem. They usually don't have symptoms. So we, we like to test everyone just to be sure. So the frequency of testing is so that we are on top of um, that that risk, yeah. And just one more question about the skin screening. So a lot of our viewers are of darker skin or of um, you know different ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Is it still important for people of, of different coloured skin to have their skin checks done? Yeah. So we live in the melanoma capital of the world, and yes, having pigment and you know pigment to your skin, like arm chocolate mm -hmm. <laughs> or coffee with a right amount of cream, it doesn't <laughs> mean that I'm immune to having any skin cancer. So it's important that you present to your GP, ideally one that is well versed on looking after skin of different ethnicities and different colours, because obviously malignancy or cancer presents differently on different coloured skin, um, but it's important that we have that. If you are of a, like a chocolate pigment or, or a bit darker, then you might not necessarily need to have a skin test every two years or every year, like someone with fair skin, blue eyed, but it's important to have that chat. Great. Thank you so much. Are there any final messages you'd like to give to any of our male viewers who might be thinking about whether they should attend a GP or you know, I've had this problem for a while, maybe I should get this checked out. What, what are your messages to them? Don't wait until something is really bad. Just go in and sometimes people, um, I acknowledge that, especially my male patients will come in and suss me out the first appointment, <laughs> they'll tell me about their sleep or other thing. And then in the subsequent appointments, discuss what really brought them the first time. But it's important to have that relationship with a GP who can pick that mm, something is not quite right or, you know, mental health issues. We, you don't have to be sick, sick to present to a GP. Sometimes having these discussions when you are supposedly well is important as well. I'm so glad we've had a chance to speak about these important messages. So thank you so much for joining me today in the studio. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Nelly. Joining me in the studio is General Practitioner Dr Andrew Gann. Dr Gann has a passion for not only supporting, but working with patients to achieve their best state of health and wellbeing. Thank you so much for coming in today, Dr Gann. Thank you for having me. Now, possibly even less commonly than men seeing a GP is the number of men who seek support for their mental health. Is mental health a problem in men? Certainly. We know that many men probably have a mental condition, but many of them have not sought help or assistance or treatment for it. We know that men are less likely than women to see the GP and even less likely to seek help if they may have symptoms of mental health condition. Can you think about some of the reasons and the barriers to this, why men do perhaps struggle a bit more than women to seek support for their mental health? I think there are many reasons behind this. Um, one of them is the um, typical Aussie attitude of, she'll be right. So um, lots of things get swept under the carpet. But we do know that mental health conditions are fairly prevalent amongst men in Australia. Um, and we do know that with the right help, that men can get better. So on that line, what are some of the mental health conditions that do affect men? So the most common ones here would be things like depression, anxiety, um, substance abuse, like alcohol um, addictions. In terms of presentation of these conditions, mm -hmm. such as depression, anxiety, are there different ways that they can manifest in men that we may not be aware about and, and perhaps that some of our viewers might be interested to hear about how some of these mental health conditions can present? Certainly. Um, many people with mental health conditions may not show any outward signs. Um, many of these ones are hidden. Um, men who are depressed may look very low, 
they may start withdrawing from social interactions, they may have difficulties at work, on their studies, on their duties at home. Men with anxiety may have panic attacks, they may avoid certain situations that may trigger their panic attacks, such as crowded places, public places. Um, they may resort to alcohol and other uh, drugs of addiction to overcome their emotions. So as a general practitioner, when you are seeing a male for a consult, are you constantly sort of looking out for any signs of this and do you question your patients about some of these features of mental health disease that they may not even be aware of themselves? Certainly. It's something I'm very aware of and I've certainly picked up on many symptoms of mental illnesses that we've explored further in our consultations. Things that I look out for and things I ask questions about are how are they coping in at school, at their work, and at home. Um, how are the stress levels in their life? Um, are the levels of stress or are their emotions interfering with their ability to perform what they should be doing? Great, so I guess it's another reason why it's really important for men as well mm. to have a regular GP so that there is someone looking out for these sort of symptoms. Certainly, and it's not something that um, many men will bring up to see the GP. Um, until things get um, much more severe. So what could um, a, a male in themselves, if they are feeling like they're, they're listening to this and they're relating to some of the things you're saying, what can they do as a first port of call? There are many things to do. Um, one thing I would say is don't be afraid to seek help. There are many professionals out there who can help you. Um, if you do have a trusted GP, go and speak to your GP about it. Um, there are also many other services, including there's Beyond Blue, which provides general counselling and support for all mental health conditions. There's Men's Line, which is a men's specific um, support organisation um, with a um, 24-hour hotline as well. There are specific veteran support services for veterans suffering from mental health conditions. For young men and teenagers up to the age of 25, they can go to the local Headspace Centre. Um, government has set up um, health and well-being hubs in the last couple of years. Um, your workplace may offer an employee assistance program through which you can see or speak to a counsellor of your choice and you could often request to speak to one of the same gender. Oh, fantastic. These are really great resources for males out there. We'll make sure that those resources are available for our viewers to be able to see it another time. Now, given that it is quite difficult for men in particular to seek support and um, may perhaps even to come to a GP. Mm -hmm. If there is a family member who is concerned about their husband or their brother or um, a, a male figure in their life, what would you recommend that they do to try and approach them and try and seek some support for them? It's great that you're looking out for the men in your life and often um, men need a bit more support and um, someone to be there with them and for them. Um, it might be a great support for you to offer to come along as a support person with the man in your life to a GP appointment or to see a healthcare practitioner or even um, see one yourself to ask um, for advice around these situations and the best way to handle it. Yeah, fantastic. So it sounds like, again, general practitioner is a great first port of call for males who may be you know, experiencing some of these symptoms that you've spoken about or for other family members who are concerned about the men in their life. Exactly. Overall, it sounds like men's health and mental health is such a big issue that we need to be able to be open about and speak about, and these conversations are a great way to spark that interest in the community. Thank you so much for coming in today and discussing these really important topics. And if this has um, brought up anything for you, please feel free to jump onto some of those sites that Dr Gann has spoken about. Um, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for watching A Healthy State. I hope you found the information in this episode helpful. As always, this is intended to be general information and if you have any specific questions about your health, please see a qualified professional. This episode and the rest of the series is available to stream on CTV+. I'm Dr Nelly Simmons and I'll see you next time. <laughs>